Hi everyone. So welcome to Sugar and Crumbs Facebook Live Thursday morning 11 a.m. This is going to be our new session. I am going to try and do it every Thursday. I just know there's a Thursday in February I can't do. Um, this session is all going to be about using our sugars and um, cocoa powders. So Monday nights is about product and the things that we sell on Sugar and Crumbs. And Thursdays is going to be how to use our product because I know so many of you send me questions and ask me, can you put it in a cake mix? How do you make buttercream? How do you make uh, cherry bake well cakes? How do you do this? How do you do that? So I thought the best thing to do, let's do a little live and do some baking then. Is that okay? Do you all agree with that? So while the audience is just building up, I'm just going to knock out my lumps out my caster sugar. So uh, I just want to knock it out just for my baking. And I'm just going to get John to start shouting out some hellos to see who's joining us. Because it is a new session, I don't expect lots of you to be joining us, but you never know, we could be surprised. The Americans are still in bed, the Australians are about to go to bed. So, <laughs> and I don't know where else in the world. Uh, Europe could be with us, couldn't they? I know where Europe, they're one hour ahead. Tenerife, maybe? Something like that. <laughs> so, have we got anybody with us here, John? We do. We've got uh, Lindsay Royal, Darren Jenkins, Sherilyn Degg, Martin Dursley, Leslie Wolster, Lee Ann Torres, Helen Price, Julie Crompton, Louisa Johnson. I think, I'm pretty sure Louise is in Australia. Yes, actually, I think she yeah. is, isn't she? Joe Fitchett. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got quite a few people so have joined us well, already. We've got a lot of regulars there, which is great. So I'm glad you regulars have joined us because I recognise most of those names. So newbies, if you're new to Sugar and Crumbs and you've just joined us, don't be scared. Drop your name down, just say where you are. Our regulars are an amazing group. I have been so fortunate that I've, John and I have been doing these sessions now nearly a year in February. We've built up an amazing group. They'll all say hi to you, they'll help you. I can't read the comments because I wear glasses and I'm blind as a bat and I get all stressed. So I have to allow John to read them all. And I must admit, it doesn't tell me them all. So, <laughs> but if you do put your name on there, say you're a newbie. If you want to ask a question, but there'll be plenty of people on here happy to help. I've got Laura in the office. Now that's not my Laura, that's admin Laura, so office manager Laura. She's in the office, hopefully she's gonna give us a wave. So if you see the little sugar and crumbs responses, that's Laura, she's all ready to answer questions. She can't do Monday nights, might have to talk to her again about her contract, hey Laura. So, <laughs> but she can do Thursday mornings. And we've got Maria back in the office again. So Maria um, was delayed on Monday due to that uh, well-known airline that's delaying all flights at the moment. So she landed in the UK just as we went live and watched us from the airport, didn't you? As she was waiting to get her bus and her bus home. So Maria's back in the kitchen. So how's our audience growing, John? I actually don't know. You don't know why? I can't, I can't see viewing figures. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> well, maybe somebody can help us out. Can you see the comments? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I can see the comments. Yeah, see the comments. Got... Have we got newbies joining us? Where are they from? I don't know. <laughs> we'll scroll back. We've got, we've got Julie from St Albans. Jane from Margate. Hi Julie, hi we've Jane. Got, we've got Mia who's a newbie in Glasgow. Oh, fantastic, yeah. Danielle from St Helens. Hello Danielle, hello. We've got Danielle. Oh, Danielle is a newbie from Newcastle. Here hello Danielle. In the, new, here in the UK. So we've got... Oh, well we've got, we got 72 people watching. That's not bad. That's really good. That's yeah, not yeah. bad for our very first session on a Thursday. Yeah. So hopefully we'll... Do you know what that tells me? People are at work. <laughs> <laughs> so people are at work and uh, but hopefully all you guys are either looking after the kids or you're retired or you've got a day off We've got Jack, Jackie who's watching us on the train on the way to Hereford oh fantastic I hope she manages to keep the signal oh, and Kat, Kat, Kat Riley has told me thank, thank you Kat yes I, I've now worked out we have got 72 thank you very much <laughs> fantastic Robert Allen's there Darren Jenkins from Bridge End yeah Louisa definitely is from Aussie Land Fantastic. Well, I've just messaged my granddaughter, who is 10 years old, Ella. So she's in Australia. She's on the Gold Coast. So um, I'm hoping she's going to pop up and say hi. John might have missed her. No. But Ella? Oh, no, she is here. Are I you there? Hi, Ella. Hi, Ella. For Grandma and Grandad. How are you? So Ella will be on our Facebook Live. She's coming over for a holiday at Easter. So we'll have some Facebook Lives going on. So I'll introduce you to her, because you all know Holly. And uh, you're getting to know grandchildren really well, aren't you? So, which is great. So anyway, I think I've knocked all my lumps out of here. 
So um, what we're going to do first, we're going to make some cupcakes first using the chocolate cocoa powders. Now the reason I'm going to make them first is because I didn't get a chance to make anything last night because my lovely friend turned up last night, kept me chatting. So um, I had to get some out of the freezer. And uh, so I'm going to make the chocolate cupcakes first simply because I want them to cool down so that we can decorate them with some buttercream that we're going to make with the cocoa powder as well. So that's the chocolate brownie stuff there. So let's get the bowl. So in our bowl here, okay, we are going to pop in, we're going to make an eight ounce mix. What is it you're making, making first? We're going to make the chocolate cupcakes. Okay, so basically we're just going to use a normal sponge mix, but we're going to take out some of the flour and add some cocoa powder. And I think that's where it confuses some people. Now I do know we've got regular bakers on here. So you regular bakers, you know this. But do remember, this is all about newbies, showing them our product, showing them how easy it is to make a chocolate cake with some cocoa powder. So talking of the cocoa powders, let's tell you what the product is. So, that's my display red. So anyhow, I'll go back to that in a minute. Okay, that's a thing with live, isn't it? Look at that, just wreck the display. So we do five chocolate cocoa powders. And if you want to laugh, feel free to laugh, I don't mind. That's what it's all about, going live. So in our chocolate cocoa powders, we make a delicious chocolate cherry. So any of you, if you're as old as me, you will remember those Sarah Lee chocolate gattos that we all used to get on a Sunday. It was a massive treat. They were delicious. They were full of cherry flavoring. Well, this chocolate cherry is just as good, if not better. It's absolutely delicious, okay? Then we have chocolate chili. Now, bone of contention, this one. Some people say it's too hot. Some people say it's not hot enough. I personally don't like anything hot. When I was younger, I could eat a vindaloo curry. Now, you've only got to flick anything hot at me and I start whinging like a big baby. But I have to say, I do love our chocolate chili cocoa powder. So, I don't know why. Give me a hot curry and I'll start crying. But give me a chocolate chili brownie. I absolutely love it. So, it's definitely one to try. Okay? Definitely. And the thing with the chocolate chilies is, you take a bite and you can't taste the chilli at first. You think, oh right, there is none. And then suddenly you get a tingle on your back, a nice warming sensation. And for some reason, your brain tells you I have to have another one. And before you know it, you've had all the chocolate brownies. So definitely give that a go, okay? Then we've got chocolate lime. Now I do love this one. Do you remember those chocolate lime sweets? So you've got the lime with the chocolate inside. Absolutely gorgeous. That's exactly what this is. And we're gonna use this one today. And then we've got chocolate orange. Now chocolate orange is fab, okay? Absolutely fab. If you wanna play it safe, give everyone chocolate orange. You won't find anybody have any problems with this. If you like those um, chocolate orange balls, can't think what they are now. Terry's chocolate orange balls, okay? This is what they're like, okay? So those the chocolate orange. And last not but not least is chocolate coconut. Now this is the mildest one of all the flavors. We can't get this actually any stronger, but it is there. So whenever I do a demo, when I'm at the cake shows and I'm offering out the chocolate, I always offer the coconut first because I want everybody to get the flavor of the coconut. If I offer them cherry, you haven't got a chance of tasting the coconut. So this is a very mild, delicate flavor. And, and if you think about coconut, it is quite a mild flavor. So we've got it as strong as we can, but it is like a bounty bar. So if you do like those bounty bar chocolate cake, uh, chocolate bars, then this is ideal. So I'm gonna pop these back on the dis display because I've already got the bags. The bags that I'm using today is chocolate cherry, and chocolate lime and we're going to make chocolate lime cupcakes yeah so let me just put this back a minute and i'll just tidy up with the display for a moment john can shout out some more hellos and if there's any more newbies john you on it yeah sorry Don't know john's with us anymore i am with you yeah <laughs> so We've got Jackie Limburn, Imam Elias, Di Wheeler, Geraldine Kisby, Jenny Scholes, Helen there. Price. All newbies, shout hello. Why can I not see any more? Not see any more? Oh, okay. Right, that wasn't too much damage to my display there. 
Right, okay, so we're going to make, as I say, oh, and I do do this a lot with my hair. I had somebody's comment the other day um, from Monday's session because I pinned my hair up. But as you all know, I am in my own kitchen, okay? I'm not baking these cakes for sale. I don't sell them to anybody. They're just in my own kitchen for the warehouse lads, John, Maria, or any of the staff who wants to scoff them. Usually my kids, but normally the warehouse lads get them. So if you see me touch my hair, they're all quite happy about it. Um, let me just see what I'm going to do first. Spatula. So, first of all, simple mix. So we're going to put in, like you do with a cake mix, we're going to put in the margarine. And as I say, I'm doing an eight ounce mix. So you can half this, or you can, but I always do an eight ounce mix. I think it's absolutely pointless doing a four, four ounce mix. Um, eight ounces is 227 grams. I'm ahead of the game. So that's eight ounces of margarine. I do always use stalk margarine. I use any caster sugar, so eight ounces of caster sugar. I'm going to pop that in and pop that into the mixer and make that nice and fluffy. So this is where John heats it now because we have the mixer going, making a load of noise. We also need to crack four eggs. I use free range. Did any of you watch the factory the other night? I think it's on BBC Two, is it? And um, I always use free range eggs. It was quite good actually because they told you about the cones that was on the eggs, so it shows I was paying attention. Shows I was paying attention, but on the cones on the eggs, so that you know that they're free range. If it's got a zero at the beginning, what does that mean? You were too listening, John. It's organic. If it's got a one, it's free range. If it's a number two, can't remember. And if it's anything else, it's a cage. So, so I will always be making sure that I don't get any eggs without a number one on or a zero. So four eggs, four large eggs I'm using for this mix. And we're going to pop them in exactly like you do with your cake mix, just one at a time. And while that's doing, just while that's beating in a little bit more, I'm going to weigh the flour. Now this is the tricky bit guys. It's not tricky, but not everybody always gets it. And this is why I've not pre-weighed it. So I'll just turn that off for a moment. So in a normal sponge mix, you would now use eight ounces of self-raising flour. Okay, I do not add um, a rising agent to my cakes. So I don't add, um, what's it called? Baking powder. Yeah, okay then, but I don't use it because I never think about it. So normally, if I'm making an eight ounce mix, a white cake, I would use eight ounces of this flour. You can use any flour you want, but I prefer this one. Um, but because we're going to add cocoa powder, I'm going to actually use six ounces, okay? So we're going to have six ounces of the self raising flour. Too much. And your measurements must be exact. And you know what, when I was a young girl, I started this conversation the other day. When I was a young girl, I always had a set of scales and measured everything. And then, um, you know, like things are when you're on a budget, scales broke, so I had to guess. And I used to make cakes by guessing. And then you end up with those horrible things, you know, they're either really crunchy on the top, which I think is too much butter or sugar, or they sink in the middle, or they just go really crispy and they drop. So don't ever attempt to make a cake mix without measuring it, and they must be exact. So we're dead on six ounces here. We're gonna make chocolate lime. So to make up the eight ounces, we are going to put in two ounces of the chocolate lime cocoa powder. So if you want to know what that is in grams, so everybody wants to know grams these days. So that's 170 grams of self-raising flour. And we're going to top it up to 227 to make it eight ounces. So what's six ounces in grams, Gloria? 170. 170. Yeah. And then we're going to add two ounces of the cocoa powder. Okay, and we're making chocolate lime, and I will tell you, 
If you haven't tried the chocolate lime, try it, it's gorgeous. Our packets of icing sugar, uh, our packets of cocoa powder should be $4.99. But John and I put them in the sale oh, a while ago for three ninety nine. dollars And in fairness, we've never taken them out of that sale. Simply because, you know, a lot of people don't use cocoa powder in the product. And we're trying to encourage you to use it. So we're trying to offer you as the best price that we can. It's a premium cocoa powder. You don't need to mix it in. So I'm just gonna leave that there. That's my eight ounces now. Let's go back to the mix. So when we go back to the mix, let me just take it off so you can see, because I'm not sure what cameras John's on, because we have four cameras in the kitchen now. So I don't know which one he's on. Which one are you on, John? It's still over here, okay. So he's still over here. So what we're gonna do is just gonna mix so you can see that cream in that butter, cream in that butter, we're over here I believe. So you can see that cream in that butter now, uh, it's not butter actually, it's margarine and sugar. So we've creamed it, it's nice, light and fluffy. I'm gonna give it another whip. Just gonna give it another whip. John's doing his direction. Poor Maria now, I don't know whether you know where to go anymore, Maria. You round here, love? There you go. So you're probably in front of that camera now. So there we go, we'll just give this another whip in here. You only need a quick, you only need a quick blast of that. So let's just give it another beat. And then we're going to start adding, adding our eggs one at a time. How are we on top? Are we still on here? Okay. So we're going to start adding our eggs one at a time. Make sure they're well incorporated, okay? Well incorporated means beat and well in. Now, quite a lot of you last Monday were really very healthy, helpful because I said to you about the mixer, that the mixing paddle doesn't reach the bottom of the bowl. And some of you have told me how to adjust it. I've still not had a chance to have a look, but I'm not sure I'm going to have to have a look at how to adjust it. So we've got one egg. We've got two eggs. That happens when you're adding your eggs is, is that your mix can start to curdle. If it starts to curdle early on, do not panic. You've got your flour, so even if this is just white flour, but we've got and we've got flour and cocoa powder here, if it starts to curdle, just to add a tablespoon of this. Okay? So we're just gonna add egg number three. It takes a little while, you know, just to give it a really good beater. I always use the paddle beater as well. And I'm going to stop this in a moment and then John can ask me any questions that you might have. I don't know if any's popped up yet, John. Uh, um, Geraldine's after we still got one heat and a tonic and we'll set one to the fairies and tasters. Yes, we have. If you place it in order, put, put it in the notes. So you would like the tasters that we will send them on to you. Yeah. The buttercream tasters, they're free. They're only a little pot of buttercream, just enough for a spoonful for you. If you're greedy, you'll probably eat the whole lot, but in fairness, there's enough to share with somebody else as well. We'll just get the little pot out for it, actually. So they're just these three little pots. I think we'll just send them out. Are you still doing the three pots, John? We'll still send the three out now, just two. Not with everybody. Okay, so basically, we've got three new flavours coming out. The Seco, Gin and Tonic and Mojito. Okay, and um, we always like people to product taste. When I first started Sugar and Crumbs, the testers were actually me, John, and any friend I could grab hold of to taste. Now, when we're bringing out a new product, we all, if one I'm happy with it and John's happy with it, we then send it out to you guys. So, for the first two weeks in January, well, we're up to the 10th, are we now, John? We're up to, no. we're up to the 11th. Let me just turn this off. So we're up to the 11th now. So the first, um, well, the first week, I think they started, when did they start doing them? Was it between Christmas and New Year? Yeah. Not quite sure. But anyhow, very soon, they've been going for two weeks now. We've been sending them in everybody's order. But as from Monday, we've had to say, can you put a note in the notes section to say that you would like the samples? And can I just tell you, they are completely alcoholic free. There's no alcohol. So let's just turn this around. So this has got a slight curdle now, which is absolutely fine. So what we're going to do now, we're going to start folding in our flour. Yeah. I did sieve the flour. You don't have to sieve it, but I did do. 
So just going to fold it in. You do not mix this in. Now, you'll see that one of the things that I didn't do was, is I didn't add flavouring. And I didn't add flavouring because the flavouring's in the cocoa powder. So you actually don't need any flavouring at all. John, can I boil the kettle before? Can you just do me a little thing of um, water, please? So we're just gonna fold this in. Half and half. Do any of you use our cocoa powders? I know Rob Allen does. I don't know whether any other of you guys do. We have but, a few uh, comments of people saying they've used them. Oh, have you? So if you guys have used them, let everybody know what you think of them and what flavour you've used and what your favourite is. And don't put everybody off the chilli. <laughs> chilli is very fashionable, it's very trendy, and I really want you to try it. So let's just do this. How long do the samples last? Um, the samples, when they arrive, it's winter, so I only really like sending out samples in the winter, if I'm honest, because I know they're going to get too nice and cold. Um, you, th you, there's no milk added to them, so you can taste them straight away or pop them in the fridge, and you can leave them there for about six, eight weeks. They're absolutely fine. Just don't leave them open. So we're just going to mix this in. So it takes a little bit longer to mix in when it's got cocoa powder in. So, sorry me, I'm gonna to have to turn it this way. You don't need to fill more of it, do you? No, that's okay. And if I get cocoa powder on my, let me know. Okay. <laughs> You're fine now. Yeah. So. I don't know what it is, you know, I've turned the heating off in here. It must be an aging, but I am absolutely on fire. So. John and Maria are frozen to death, but I'm on fire. So let's just show you what the mix looks like. So we're there. So it's a nice light brown mix, but this is going to go into a deep chocolate brown mix. So you'll see that I'm lifting it up, making sure it's all incorporated. So just one second. Just got a couple of questions. Yeah, uh, Paul, no Pauline's off to work. Yes. Pauline, you can watch the video later on. Um, you don't need to watch it live. You can just you can literally watch it um, at your will later on. Uh, it'll be still on the Facebook page and it will be on YouTube. Um, and we had a question. I just see it's flown past. Um, how long do you beat every time you add an egg? Um, until it's all incorporated. John, what did you do with that water for me? Ah, brilliant, great, super. So what I'm going to do now is, is that I boiled some water earlier. And I've just, I forgot to put it in the dish, so I've just asked John to put some in the dish for me. And I'm going to add two tablespoons of the water. I just need to find my measuring spoons. I thought I had them here. Just one second. Measuring spoons, where have they gone? What did I do with those? Right, okay. So I'm going to have to guess it because... For some mysterious reason, my measuring spoons have disappeared. So I don't know where they are. So I'm just going to have to guess it, guys. So you put in one warm boiled water, okay, cooled boiled water, whatever, um, into the mix, one tablespoon into the mix um, per four ounces. So I've done eight ounces, so I'm going to put two in. Now these are not tablespoons, so when you see me put three in, that's the reason why. Doesn't matter if you do a little bit more. It's absolutely fine. Can you see my measuring spoons anywhere, John? Probably in the uh, yeah. mm. Helen's just asked about which one, which video is the one with the FMN Christmas cutters. Um, hopefully Laura's, Laura's watching in the office. She'll be able to find that one for you, Helen, and she'll be able to post the YouTube link. So we'll get that, get that to you straight away. Has she got the cutter? No, no, she wants, she, I think she's interested in seeing the the, Demo. the video, the Facebook Live of the yeah. FMM cutters. Right, okay, so we're all mixed up. Let's move that out of the way. So let's move that out of the way. We can move that, we can move that now. We can get rid of that. Get rid of that, let's have a quick tidy. Right, sorry, Maria. So let's get our cupcakes, tins. Always use a good quality tin. Um, you know, when I was a young girl and I had no money, I remember buying stuff off the market and uh, 
they were great, and then the first time I washed them, they all went rusty. So now I only buy a good quality tin. So if you can invest in a quality tin, either a Wilton tin. So John, are we on this camera now? Yeah. Right, okay, it's just that this is all mucky. So where's my dish clock? Because I need to clean this. Sorry, I'll get back in the camera so that you can see. Just let me clean this up. And then we've got these new cases in. We do them in packets of 250, I think for £4.50. And we do them in packets of 50, I think. So we're just gonna do these. And we do them in various colours. Really nice, strong and thick, grease poof they are. Now I don't know how you guys actually measure for your cupcakes. I don't know whether you um, pour it in, just spoon it in, guess, or whether you use an ice cream scoop, it's entirely up to you. I always use two spoons, that's the way my grandma showed me how to do it. So, and I always have the pleasure of it, being a young girl of being able to lick the spoon. Having said that, I had four sisters, so I'm sure you've all done this. One of you got the spoon, the spoon, one of you got this spatula, and one of you got the bowl. And whoever got the bowl was, we were all fed up with, because they always got more in the bowl, didn't they? So, uh, who used to do that? So let's just get this lot. Jenny, Jenny's asked, is there much difference in the flavour between the Jaffa Twist icing sugar and the chocolate orange cocoa powder? No, it is. It is. We use the same orange flavouring, so the, the flavour is, is uh, sim well, it's the same. Yeah. Basically, what John was trying to show you there, and this is what I'm trying to tell you about the cocoa powders, if you have got chocolate orange cocoa powder, our chocolate orange cocoa powder, in your cupboard, you can make buttercream with it. And the buttercream you can make with the chocolate orange is Jaffa Twist. And I'm actually going to show you how to make it afterwards, okay? If you use the lime, we don't make this one now, but we used to have a, we used to have a flavor called Sublime Lime. And we stopped selling it simply because it wasn't a big seller. And we brought other flavors out that were flying off the shelves. And I think when you've got 36 flavors for sale, you know, you can't, you just, you've got to get rid of a couple. And um, we have got rid of a couple, John and I, we've eliminated some. We were asked to, all you guys who want cinnamon swirl, okay, John wanted it discontinued last year, and I had a lot of people ask me for cinnamon swirl. We brought it back, and guys, it's not a big seller, it's just not worth it for us. So what I would say is, if you are a cinnamon swirl fan, and you cannot live without it, grab it now. The sale is still on, so grab it now because from my understanding of John, he is not bringing that back. So I, I meant to show you the ice cream scoop method. So I've used it two spoons. You can tell that's what I'm used to, okay? And you fill your cupcake cases up two thirds full. If you want to use an ice cream scoop, you can do. Now this one's broken, so I'm just gonna have to scrape it out but a lot of people like to use an ice cream scoop very simple but this just makes sure that all your measurements are exactly the same and what i should have done is i should have brought in one of our scrapers as well just to show you how much you actually throw away when you don't use a scraper because i know a lot of you have bought a scraper off me and uh, there's several benefits for having the scraper well to use the spatula instead there's several benefits for having the scraper. You get enough out to make yourself another cupcake, okay? And if you're on a diet like me, it stops you having enough to eat out the bowl. So, okay, so this mix here that I've made now, because people always ask how much does the mix make? So I've made 12, 18, 20 cupcakes. So there you go, those can go in there. Let's take those out. John, let me pass you that. We're gonna put these in the oven, okay? And we're gonna put these in the oven on a slightly higher heat of 160. I don't know what that is in gas. If anybody knows what that is on gas, please let me know if you want them. And I'm going to put them, I don't know whether John's got a camera to show. Have you got a camera to show, John? Because I know a lot of people did ask. 
So I don't know the job I can show you there, but I'm going to put them on, I don't know, is that the middle shelf and the bottom shelf? Um, I mistakenly told somebody the top shelf, because to me that is the top shelf, but thinking about it, that's because that's always my top shelf, but thinking about it, that's my top shelf, but technically it's the middle shelf. Okay, so let's put those in the oven. They're going in at half past 11. So let me just wash my hands again, guys. One second. Let's come back to you. So, have we got any questions, John? No, I don't think it's the... So, is Ella from Australia still here? I don't know, actually. You don't know? She might have found something better to do. She might have found something better to do, great. Um, right, I just dropped a boo-boo. So just hold on a second. Jane, Jane said she's dieting. She's lost over a stone in five weeks, which over the Christmas period is very, very good. Well done. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Well done, Jane. Well done. So, sorry, I'll just get myself uh, another bowl. Julianne said hello to Maria. <laughs> hey, why, is, why is Maria getting a little bit of favouritism there, hey? I don't know. <laughs> so what we're going to do now she's is... She's been away for so long, she's been missed. She's been missed, has she? Can I just pass you that, John? I know Maria had a great holiday. She went back to Spain, and while we're, I don't, those guys who don't know Maria, come here, Maria, let's say hello. So for you guys who don't know Maria, Maria works in the office with me, so we work together. We work in a different office from John and Laura, because we prefer it that way, don't we? <laughs> so, um, We'd fight if we were all together. Yeah. Well. <laughs> John's right, we would fight if we were all together. So Maria and I work in office together. Maria's from Spain, she's here learning English and she speaks beautiful English. And she does all those posts for you as well when she's doing whatever day it is. What day is it today, do you know? I don't know. You don't know? She's been banned. John says we've got to ban her from doing them, so she hasn't no, done them. No, I didn't them. say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> So, anyhow, so Maria does quite a lot of the posts for you. She does the Instagram and the Twitter, and then I usually answer any of the posts as well. And then, um, you've been in Spain having absolutely gorgeous weather, haven't you? Yes. She was telling me yesterday that she was there sat in t-shirt. So while we've been freezing to death and had that horrible snow, and it's been so cold at night time, Maria is just experiencing it now. So we're going to make the chocolate brownies, okay? Now with the chocolate brownies, I've already pre-measured the mixture. So the mix, the chocolate brownie mix, is actually on the back of the packet. So when you buy your cocoa powder, on the back of every packet is the chocolate brownie mix that I'm going to show you now. Okay, so it's very, very easy. Again, it's your margarine and butter in the mixer. So let's put that in. Get all that in one second. So I'm just going to pop the sugar in as well. The sugar that I was knocking all the lumps out of before. And have I got a, can you wash me another spatula, John, please? And then let me just pop on there. I know you can't see the mixer because I don't know which camera John's on. Um, but I just thought there's no point you having a look at the mixer really, is there? But you can have a look this side. So basically what we're going to do now is we're going to mix in the sugar and the margarine again. So let me just tell you what the measurements were because I can't remember them. So the margarine is 270 grams, okay, of margarine as you store. And the sugar, the caster sugar is 375 grams, okay, so 275 grams of margarine and 375 grams of caster sugar. We're going to mix it till it's combined, okay, so I'm just going to turn that on while I crack my eggs. And we've got four eggs again. Get those out. John, I'm going to stir it. I'm going to that one. Sorry? Can I open the back door, please? Sorry, guys. There must be something wrong with me. I think I've got to that lovely age of 55. The only problem is I've been like this since I was 35. So I'm actually boiling to death. I had a hysterectomy when I was 35, I was only young when I had it, and I thought I might go on the change early. Well, it looks like I've been suffering for the last 20 years, It's probably why I'm a constant lunatic. So, uh, as, John, uh, as John might think I am, all my friends think I'm an LOD. <laughs> so, we've mixed the mix now, so let's just get that really nice and fluffy. Do you all use a 
paddle and not the whisk. I do. I never use the whisk for any cake mixes at all. I only use the whisk for cream and browns couple overs. So while that's doing, let's get the parchment paper out. Do you want to some scissors, please? I need some parchment paper. Ah, there's my spoon. Come inside, you've got some more eggs in the morning. So let's just stop this a moment. So let's just stop this a moment. Let's prepare the tin. I'm not going to grease the tin. No need to grease the tin. So just a square brownie tin or an oblong brownie tin. It doesn't really matter. And you know what? If you haven't got one of these, uh, improvise. Find something that's square or round. They don't have, brownies don't have to be square. Just use what you want to use. So John, which camera are we on? We're we still on the same one. Oh, we're on this one now. So all I'm going to do is just cut along here. So you'll see that just slightly overlap the pan. So there's no grease going in the pan. Okay. And I'm going to sit that in. I'm just going to square it out with my fingers. Some of you might think, oh my goodness, what's she doing? But this is the way it's done. We're going to cut down into the corners. Doesn't have to be neat. Cut down into the corners, right down, and then we're just going to fold over the corners there so that that sits in. Is Ella still with us? I've not seen Ella. I've not seen Ella. No. So we're just going to do that. Right, okay. Don't worry about these coming up. They'll come up. If you want to grease it, you can, but I don't. So he's just. Uh, Let's just run my finger around a bit tighter there. Who's made the chocolate brownies with um, our cocoa powders? Because we've done this before and I know so many of you do make them. So, okay, so we've got our egg mix going. Did you wash me another paddle one of these? Paddle, you gave it to me. I think that's, that's all there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, so I give you the old one. Let's move this off. Now, some of you know that I've got plenty of Kitchen Aids, okay? And I will tell you, I do love the Kitchen Aids. I love them, I love the shape, I love the design, I love the colours, I love everything about it except for this. I hate this because when you mix, you find this thing starts popping out. So we have to push it in. Sometimes I have to knock it in with a hammer. And then this little attachment sometimes comes on loose and it all falls apart. And if you don't keep an eye on it, it has landed in the cake mix. So you really do need to keep an eye on it. Okay, and those are the two bad things about it. Um, and the other thing is, is the little top that goes on the top to stop you icing cloud going all over the place is a complete waste of time. And the reason I'm telling you about this is, is because I've told KitchenAid many times and they're not interested. So you know what, I'll tell them live. They're not going to listen to their customer feedback and sort it out. Um, then you know what, I'll talk about it live. But otherwise, I really like it if they could sort those problems out. Probably could do with being a bit faster as well. But it hasn't stopped me buying them. And all of you who've got a KitchenAid will probably agree with what I've just said there. And they look very pretty and everybody comes in and is usually quite jealous that you've got one. So we're just going to show you how lovely and fluffy that is. I don't know which camera John's on. Uh, so very much like the cake mix. So we're just making that lovely and fluffy. Can you see? So it's all incorporated and now we're going to add our eggs and again exactly like the cake mix one at a time so maria's running around here with the camera for those of you who are newbies and don't know maria okay your maria is the lady who makes maria makes all our little videos so she'll make little one minute videos so in go my eggs so one get them incorporated. So does anybody know how many viewers? Are we still keeping our viewers with us? How are we doing guys? I know you can't see, I'm waiting for someone to shout out. Right, okay. right fantastic. Good. So that's another egg, egg number two. Yeah, James got a mixer 
Paul Milgram. Yeah, get your name Paul Milgram, is it? <laughs> I haven't named mine. I've actually been fortunate to get a lot of mixers. When I first started buying mixers, I bought one for myself as a treat. And then um, I actually asked, asked the kids to get me one for Christmas. And I've been fortunate enough to have uh, four grown-up children that were in their 30s. They all clubbed together and got me one for Christmas. And then my birthday is in February, so I asked for another one. And then later that year, I saw another colour and I bought another one. And I think John sort of lost the plot by then. And then um, they just keep coming for Christmas and birthdays, but I think totally been, been banned from them now. So you can see John, if you, if you see John now, you can see that he's raising his eyebrows and has no idea why I'm telling you this. But you know what, you guys, you know, you all get involved in my life, so I like to tell you. Right, okay, so when it comes to the brownie mix, we use plain flour, okay? So we've got plain flour and you don't need much of it, okay? You only need 100 grams of plain flour. No baking powder, nothing else, just 100 grams of plain flour, okay? And the cocoa powder, you need 85 grams of cocoa powder. So let's get the mix out. So have you got that? 85 grams of cocoa powder, 100 grams of plain flour. And as I told you before, the recipe is on the back of the packet. So if you haven't got the recipe, it's on the back of the packet. And if you lose your packet because your packet's broken or split, then, right, just let me show this to the camera there, Maria. You got it enough times now? Yeah? Okay, so let me just show you guys. So that's all incorporated really nicely. And this one didn't curdle as much as the, uh, as the other mix for the chocolate cake. So it just goes really, you just never know what's going to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold in the 100 grams of flour. Which camera are we on, John? At the top. So do we need to be there? Bagel. Yeah. There? Okay. It's so funny now, now we've got this new setup knowing where we've got to be. And poor Maria, she's a, it's a good job she's a skinny little whippet there, kept trying to get around the kitchen. So we're just going to fold in the flour. And at the same time, we're going to fold in 85 grams of cocoa powder. Now your oven temperature should have been on and it's much lower at 140, okay? I think 140 is a gas mark one. So my cupcakes I've got on at 160, but my brownies I want on at 140. Which cocoa powder are you using for this one? And the cocoa powder I'm using for this one is the chocolate cherry. So we've used two cocoa powders today. Um, now the reason we haven't used chilli is because I'm on a diet, I just know I would eat them, definitely. Whereas I do know with the chocolate cherry, I will give them away. So that's very important that I give them away. And the chocolate lime is for the cupcakes, okay? And, the... and you can use any flavour. You know, you can do chocolate chilli cupcakes and you can do chocolate lime brownies. They are all delicious. So we're just going to mix in. So this is very similar to what we've done with the cake mix, okay, that we did earlier, but a lot less flour. And do you think, the, we've got a question out in the kitchen here, do you think you need the larger one or does a normal one manage most things? I do all mine with the normal one, but if you're a professional, okay, then maybe the bigger one. I do know professional bakers have the bigger one, but I've just got all the normal standard size. And, uh, that's the ones I've got. You know, I use the KitchenAid at work. I don't use KitchenAid at work, sorry. The mixers that we use at work that do all the buttercreams are the Andrew James mixers. Now, they are cheap and cheerful, and aren't they little workhorses? I've got two machines there that I've had from 2013 since we were blending, <coughs> because there's no way I'm letting the guys... Can I have another spatula, please, John? There's no way I'm letting the guys in the warehouses uh, the warehouse production area have my KitchenAid in there. So I sent in two Andrew James, a red one and a black one. Um, and they're still going strong now. So all your buttercream samples that you get are all blended with that. Now, Andrew James very kindly, and they're the only people to give me anything actually, they very kindly sent me an Andrew James mixer, their new compact one. And I have to say, I thought it was great. So they sent it and they even said that they wasn't sure about the noise. They themselves thought it was a bit noisy, 
personally I didn't think so and I did tell them that but they sent me another one and it was slightly quieter but you find that with the KitchenAid some are noisier than others so um, so now the boys in the warehouse lads uh, the warehouse lads have got four kitchen uh, not four KitchenAids four Andrew James's down in the warehouse and they're about 75 pounds so if you are just starting out or you don't want to spend a ridiculous amount of money on a machine I would certainly recommend the Andrew James. So there you go. So this is our brownie mix, guys. Ladies, guys, peeps, whatever it is we're allowed to call you these days. I'm not actually sure it's all very confusing now, isn't it? Anyhow, if anybody wants to know, I'm a girl. You don't like to say that. I can say it. I was born a girl. I'm happy to be a girl. And anybody else can be exactly what they want. Yeah, I'm doing the recipe. <laughs> so Maria's just having a little bit of panic about the chocolate chips. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pour half the chocolate mix in. It's good for us to remind me because I do forget things. So we're going to pour half the mix in. Now my son is a chef okay and he thinks it's shocking that I put these chocolate brownies in the oven for 40 minutes yeah he puts them in the oven for 25 minutes he says mum there needs to be a wobble on them so anyhow the chocolate I'm using is the end of a packet so they're a little bit broken up so I've used these if anybody wants to know and they're called Calibre 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 Okay, and these are the easy melts. Okay, so these really melt nice and easily. But basically, you can use any chocolate chops you want. But that's what I've used. And it's the end of the packet, but they're all a little bit broken as they get to the end of the packet. But that doesn't really matter for what we want them for. So we're going to do a layer of chocolate. You can put as much chocolate as you want. You can put cherries in if you want to. Probably wouldn't put nuts in, albeit I have heard that people do put nuts in. So... We're going to do that, put a layer of chocolate in, and then we're going to put the rest of the mix on. Let's get it all out. So, John, is there any questions? Uh, no, not at the moment. And what I'm going to have to do for time is I am going to have to show you this at 25, I'm at 25 minutes in the oven. And then I'm going to have to come back later and just show you a picture or just do, get Maria to just do a little one of me taking it out of the oven that she can add on to the end of the Facebook Live. Because I don't think you're actually going to see this all live, thinking about it. But the main thing is, is that you now know how to make it and how easy it is to make as well. And that's what the important thing is. So we're just going to... Cat says she can see me. Pat, Kat says, I'm sure Pat, Cat just goes looking for you, John. She spotted Kat, us. Kat, it's a little Kat, game. I'm, I'm, I'm not the one with the camera next to Carol. <laughs> that's, that, that's Maria. I bet she can see you in that window <laughs> over there. <laughs> so there we go. There's our chocolate brownies. That gives John some washing up to do because I'm going to need those back. So let's just get that over there because I didn't bring in another bowl, so John's going to have to wash up. Where's my ceremony? So let's put some chocolate over the top. It's going to make it really chocolatey. Chocolate I'm going to use all this chocolate on it. You really don't need all this chocolate, if I'm really honest. But I'm going to use all of it just to get rid of it so that I don't eat it. So there you go. There's our chocolate brownies from the oven. I'm going to do that. So while I pop that in the oven, it's 1.40. I'm just going to have a quick clean up and I'm just going to let John do a little shout out. Let me just get a clean bowl. I'm going to let John do a little shout out and I'm going to answer any questions. So I don't know what you're going to look at for a minute, but uh, do you want to answer any questions, John? Because we're going to make some buttercream now oh, for the I cakes. Think, I think Kat must have seen my reflection in the mixing bowl. Oh, has she? Yeah. <laughs> She's clever. Yeah. She's clever. Well spotted. <laughs> Let me just clean the mixing bowl. I've got to bring another one in, guys. So I'll do it. Oh, Ella 
Alan still with us? Oh, hello. Hi, Alan. I don't get a chance to speak to my granddaughter in Australia very often. So it's nice that she's been able to join us on this live today. Do you want to just shout out any questions, John, if you want to answer? Uh, I don't think we've got any questions at the moment. How did we go on with the questions when I asked, has anybody used the chocolate cocoa powder before? Or yes, quite a few people have. Have they yes. made brownies before? Uh, I'm not sure. Lots of people have used the cocoa powder. Right, okay then. <coughs> so, if I'm back with a clean bowl, let's just have a clean up here. It's amazing how much mess you can make when baking, isn't it? Right, John, can you pass it? Oh, I've got a seat on there. So let me just uh, clean my bowl a minute. So then from the cocoa powder now, so we've made two things there. I was going to make a mousse, but I'm going to save that for another session because I'm going to get Laura to make it. She's, uh, I've never made it before and I need to have a, I need to have a practice, I think. So I clean my bowl now and then I pre-weighed my ingredients as well. I'm going to make chocolate and lime. So let me bring these over here. So, to make cocoa powder, can we get that bowl out of the way? Is it in the way? No. No? Oh, that's good. Even though I'm here, not directly in the way. Well, she'll just move it anyhow. I'm not distracted. Right, so, John and I over the years have had some funny experiences with people making buttercream with cocoa powder. And John had an experience of a, a guy from Liverpool ringing him saying, I don't know what's gone wrong, but I tasted, I tasted your uh, chocolate uh, brownies in your buttercream, and it was absolutely amazing when I bought it at the cake show. And then he used a very graphic word of what his tasted like. So John was totally confused, and yet it turns out that he has put 250 grams of butter, butter, I just need a spatula, John, please. Sorry, guys. I didn't bring in enough equipment. I'm just my fingers. <laughs> so he'd used 250 grams of butter and then he got a full packet of cocoa powder and put the whole packet of cocoa powder in with the butter and mixed it. So there's where he's gone wrong. So have any of you guys done that? Because if you do that, ugh. Disgusting. So we've got we've got butter, 250 grams of butter. All of you always ask what type of butter I use. To be fair, I don't think there's any need to invest in a really good value, a really good butter, simply because our flavouring is so good that there's no point having that, paying that extra for a flavoursome butter. Okay, so just buy yourself supermarket's own butter, and I think we're on Tesco's this week. But we Ella, use Ella's asked the question to say that. Their brownies always get stuck to the paper. What are they doing wrong? So it must be the wrong paper. Is mummy buying a greaseproof paper? Don't know, Ella. Don't know, babe. I'm gonna chat to you later. Go and get the paper out and have a look at it, see which one it is. It should be greaseproof paper or parchment paper. So basically, we're gonna put the butter into the machine now. Now to make the icing sugar, 500 grams of just your normal plain bag of icing sugar, okay? That's all you need. And then we're making chocolate lime, are we? Because it was a uh, chocolate lime. No, we're gonna make, what, what uh, cupcakes are gonna make? Lime. Lime, good, got it. <laughs> Nearly lost myself then. So the buttercream recipe is on the back there, just the ingredients as well, okay? And all you need for this is, and let me find my scales, what have I done with them? Here they are. Get to have a little measure and bowl. And all you need is 35 grams. Can you put some spoons here, John? And let me just have a look at my cupcakes a moment. There's the black. this camera again because look I've only mixed that butter and that bar's coming out and if that bar comes out all together this falls off so it's very important you make sure that bar's in all the time so scales so we're back on here and then all you need is so 500 grams of plain icing sugar do sieve it okay so make sure you sieve it 
And what we're going to do is we're going to put in 30 grams of the cocoa powder, okay? Now you can put in 30 to 40 grams, it's entirely up to you, but I think that the chocolate lime is actually strong enough, you don't need that much. So we're gonna put in, um, in fact, no, we're putting 35 to be on the safe side. I haven't tasted it for a while. So you can put it into your taste. You can always add a bit more if you wanted to, once you've done your mix. So all we're going to do now is, and this is exactly how, uh, when we're making our icing sugars, your chocolate icing sugars, how we make them. So we'll put that on there. And we're just gonna mix it all in. Now you don't have to mix it in, if I'm really honest, because you're just gonna put it in the mixer. But I'm just showing you that that little bit will give you a very pale coloured uh, icing, coloured icing sugar. But you'll be amazed that when we make it into a buttercream, how lovely and dark it'll go. So let's just mix it all in there. Any more questions, John? How's our audience doing? Are they all still with us? Are you enjoying this morning session? Are you all engrossed? <laughs> It does take 30 seconds for us to get a response. So as much as you respond and see your responses straight away, John and I actually don't see them for 30 seconds. So if you like something, we actually don't know you like it until 30 seconds later. So can you see how this color now is incorporated? So the reason I wanted to show you this was, is I don't want you to be fooled when you add cocoa powder to the icing sugar that it's not dark enough, okay? I don't want you to think, oh my God, I need to put in a lot more cocoa powder. That's not a brown color. This lovely light color is exactly what you need. Now, from here, you can take some out and add some boiling water, okay? And what we're gonna do is, I'm actually just gonna take a spoonful out to add boiling water to it, so just for a little drizzle later. I called it water icing, and Maria didn't know what water icing was. Neither did John, but I called it water icing because when I was a young girl, you used to call it glaze or fondant, but now everybody calls sugar paste fondant. So, um, you know, there's going to come a time that I don't think we know what anything's called anymore, actually. So there you go. You can see how lovely and light it is. Which colour, which camera are you on, John? Are we on the top one, this one? So is that in there? Can they see that? Okay, so as you can see, not brown at all. I'm just going to give my butter another I'm just going to check my thing. I'm just going to sit these round here. That'll be fine. We'll leave them to cool there. Now, when you bring your cakes out of the oven, one of the things that you shouldn't do is just whack them down on your worktop. If you've got something like this, use this. If you haven't got these or you've got a small kitchen, all of you will get an oven, all of you will have an oven that generally has one of these in. So every oven comes with one of these. So all you need to do is maybe sit your cakes on top of one of these, okay? Or even take that out and sit them on there. So you've all got a grill pan, I think that's what they call it. So use that if you haven't got one of those. So we're just gonna move those to there a moment. Let them cool down. Let's see how our butter is. See how our butter is. So you don't need to beat this till it's nice and white. 
because it's, it's pointless really. It just needs to be well beaten. And then we're going to add this lovely light mixture of icing sugar and cocoa powder. And this is 500 grams. So let's just get that in there. Right, John, can I give you all the pots, please? There you go. Super. Right, so this now is where you have to be really careful so that you don't get an icing cloud. So I'm just going to put my tea towel over the top. This mixer does come with a little gadget. It does come with a little gadget, but completely pointless. So we're just going to turn this on. If you don't put a cover, now you can use a damp tea towel, which is better. I'm just using a dry one, but a damp tea towel is better, if I'm honest, because then it, it sort of clings around here as well. But um, as you start to see this get a little bit harder, to, as it starts looking as though it's working hard, it does mean it's usually mixed it up. I'm just going to add in a little bit of water just to help it going. Because my. Joe's asked the question is the chocolate mint the same or is that just a flavoured icing sugar? That's just a flavoured icing, icing sugar. Icing sugar. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't made a mint cocoa powder, if I'm honest, because I'm not sure whether it would actually be a big seller. And the thing is, is that we do these fine cocoa powders, and it's something that John and I need to consider whether we're going to con continue doing them, if I'm honest. We've been doing them for five years now, and it's why I really want to do this Facebook Live, just to show you how to use them. Because I think once people start using them, you'll love them. So I don't, I can't really ask John yet to make any more. Sorry for the noise, I'm just give this a really good beating. So while that's beating now, these have been in the pan long enough. Let me just turn that off. While that's beating now, these have been in the pan long enough to now take out. They do say 10 minutes, but let's just take them out, pop them on there, because we want them to go a bit cooler quicker. Did anybody remember what time I put the chocolate brownies in? No. 11.38. What? 11.38. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. So now they're out of the pan, they should cool. Now, one of the big mistakes that I used to do as well um, with uh, the cupcakes when they were out, obviously I want them to cool. And um, you know in the summer you've got all your windows open and the flies come in and anything else. So the first thing I used to do was grab a tea towel and put a tea towel, a clean tea towel over the top of them. And then I came back and all my cases were peeling. So I've stopped that little trick. The other things that encourages cases to peel is a rubbish case, if I'm really honest. So if you bought a cheap uh, baking case, they'll peel, okay? You'll also find like, look at these, no grease out the bottom. These are great, these. When you get them all greasy and things at the bottom, that's not great either. Um, the other things that make them um, peel is when they're not cooked enough as well. So if they're slightly undercooked, they'll um, start to peel. And if you slap them down, they'll start to peel as well. So let's just get this on. dark chocolate powder and what will happen with this is is that as when this sets it'll go darker as well so let's So that's three things you can make with your cocoa powders. You can use the cocoa powders for those people who make truffles you can use it for that as well. So let me just get this I've just got to give it another beat so I've got a load of stuff around the edge of the pan there. 
So let me just make sure everything's incorporated. I'm just going to add a little bit of water simply because my butter wasn't room temperature today. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of water. You can add a little bit of condensed milk if you want to. And then while that's doing, I'm just going to prepare a couple of nozzles so that we can do a swirl for you on the cupcakes. So newbies, if there's any more newbies joined us, feel free to say hi. We're a friendly group here, we've got lots of followers. This is our new Facebook Live on a Thursday morning. It's going to be 11 a.m. every Thursday. If you're not in and you want to catch up, it will be pinned to the top of our page from Thursday till Monday. For all you newbies, we do a Facebook Live on a Monday at 8 p.m. as well, okay? And then Maria puts it all together. So today's session will be on YouTube this afternoon. So if you don't want to go on Facebook and watch it there, you can go over to YouTube. Please subscribe to our channel. I'm trying to build up my subscribers there. And it's also a great reference place because once we unpin this, it goes down the news feed. So if ever you want to go back and look for something, like the lady who is asking for the patchwork cutters, if you go over to our YouTube channel, you'll go there and you'll find it. Because I think the heading is patchwork cutters, is it, Maria? Yeah normally head it with whatever it is that we're doing. So uh, Laura did one on brownies last year and we're doing one now. So just have a second. I think our buttercream is done. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm trying to build up the following on that. So even if you watch us here I really appreciate it. And the other thing as well and I forgot to put it in today's post but I will put it in later. We've been nominated for I think it's for categories can you remember you two with baking heaven so baking heaven magazine are doing um, nominations now these nominations are for genuine people to vote i.e you the viewer you the consumer you the cake decorator you the hobby baker you who's just sat here watching who doesn't bake this means that you vote for your winners okay so like there's a, the best artist there's the best retailer there's the best learning experience there's loads of things and we've been fortunate enough to be nominated for four categories now i um, had the link up last week and i know a lot of you put it on i'm going to add it to this um to the top of this banner when i when we finish here today i'm going to add it to the top of this one and it's so easy it's free just pop along to bake in heaven on the link and fill in the survey okay on who you would like to win and i can't remember the categories we're up at for, we're up for at the moment but i will tell you i do think best retailer i think learning experience is one of them product i can't remember i might have got it all wrong because i do get it all wrong so <laughs> Right, so here we go. Right, so let's get some, um, I would normally let these be a bit cooler. So what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna pop these into a piping bag, and that's my piping bags. There we have Scissors. So let's knock a couple of these out. Can you just pop the kettle on for me, John, as well, please? Martin, do you want to make a flamingo cake? Martin's what? Gonna make the flamingo cake. Oh, are you, Martin? Do you know what? I'd like to see it. I hope you do. And you know what? That that one I did in December was the very first one. And the one I did on Monday was the second one. I also know Elaine Norton's bought the products in already. She's going to give it a go, but she had a poorly back. She's going to do it today. But her back's hurting her, so um, she's going to do it later on in the week, I think. So I think Elaine's watching this morning. If she is, give us a shout. So I'd love to see you both make that. So I'm just going to put the Wilton one end together. Okay, I'm gonna put some buttercream in here. Just so we can do a quick swirl on our cupcakes. So remember this is the chocolate lime to go with the chocolate lime cupcakes. 
You, I tell you what would be really nice with this, if I'm really honest, chocolate lime cupcakes with um, the lime zest, I haven't got any here, the lime zest icing sugar. Do remember the sale is still on, so if you're a newbie, you're getting these at the best prices, okay? So the sale's still on. So these would be lovely with the white icing sugar, the lime zest, really nice and fresh. But if you want it all chocolate indulgent, then go for this one. You can take out your center if you wanted to, put some jam in the middle. We're not gonna do that. I'm going to use one of the Russian piping tips, one of our mini ones, okay? So the Russian piping tips for newbies as well, we only make the genuine Russian piping tips. It's not a nifty nozzle, it's a copy. So I'll probably have some of those copy sellers on here in a minute, send it across angry faces, just ignore them. And uh, so we'll just probably use one of those. We're just going to just do all chocolate design. Yeah, I just think that would be great. I only use small piping bags, okay? And our piping bags are on offer at the moment, 100 for five pound. So they're well worth it. And they're good quality piping bags as well. They don't split the seams. The seams don't split. They're nice and solid. I only use the small piping bags simply because you only need a handful. There's no point filling up one of those big giant blue piping bags and then you've got to hold it here and the blue piping bag's hanging over. All that's gonna happen, it's gonna fall out or you need to put a clip on it and you're just not going to have control. So a handful is more than enough. I'm just gonna use a leaf tip as well. Okay. I'll just do some little bit of decorating with this buttercream. And then hopefully by the time I've done all this, my chocolate brownie will be done and out the oven. Might not be. I might have to get John to take the iPad to the oven to you and I'll give you, I'll have to show you later. But do try the chocolate brownies and try these chocolate cupcakes as well. They are amazing, aren't they Maria? Yeah. They're so nice that to be fair, once you start eating them, you can't stop eating them. So as I say, my son says you should put them in the oven for 25 minutes, take them out, don't cut them, don't do nothing, leave them in the pan, let them go cool, and then put them in the fridge overnight once they've gone cool and slice them in the morning. I do them a bit longer, I do them for 40 minutes, okay? And then after a few minutes, after 10 minutes, I take them out of the pan and I chop them straight away and start scoffing them. That's why I'm this size, because I scoff all of it. So <laughs> John's raising his eyes because he knows it's true. Right, let's move that out of the way. But I'm gonna be a good girl, I'm on a diet, lost three pounds, don't know what else I've lost this week. But uh, that's it. So let's get this cupcake, this cupcake here and let's get the swirl. So hopefully it's not gonna melt. I'm gonna use the 1M Wilton. So, is John, which camera should I go into that they can see nearer? This one here? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we're here and we're going to jump. Do you want to go around that side? It'd be better, won't it? So, um, so we're just going to do a normal swirl first. So we're just going to do a row swirl. So we start in the middle. We're going to go around, round, round, filling up our cupcakes and down, yeah? So do that again, how lovely is that? Okay, and my cup, my muffins are a little bit hot, so I'm just gonna have to live with it. Let me just get a, a nice hive on here. So we're gonna sit it on top of the nozzle. Are we here, John, is that close enough? Are we on top? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, so we're, but my, with Perfect. my hand going yeah. away. Fine. So we're gonna sit it on top, and we're gonna go around, Gonna overlap that one there, round, and just pull off, yeah? So let me just do it again, just to make sure you've got it. Can you put it on this camera, John? So then I can hold it better that way. So we're gonna go into the middle, and you can see that I overlap the center. And then we go around nice and tight, squeeze it nice and tight, and bring that down. Okay. What nozzle are you using? I am using the Wilton 1M. They're on our website. So I'm just going to do a chocolate leaf with this one now. So what you can do here, you could put a pearl on. You could do a sugar paste leaf. 
but I'm actually going to do a chocolate leaf with the Wilton 352. And all we're going to do there is we're just going to squeeze a nice chocolate leaf to finish it off. So this is a full delicious chocolate cake and I know someone in this room who's got their eyes on it beginning with M. <laughs> Because she is a cakeaholic, aren't we, Maria? Yes. She loves cake. She enjoyed that flamingo cake that we made the other day. Okay, so we've got that one. Let's have a little clean up on here so our station looks nice. Not covered in the. Uh, not covered in that. What do you think of those guys? Do you like it? You liking it, John? I don't think I, I can't actually see the. You can't see the likes. The likes on this. Uh, if you like system. everything I'm doing, please let me know. You know, it's really nice when you get all those uh, likes and love hearts. Makes you feel appreciated. Make sure it lets me know that you're enjoying the whole experience. So I don't know whether we've had to use Laura much today. She had to yes, do she's much work quite, today. Yeah, she's put quite a few comments on links. Okay, yep. so. Then our next cat, the one we're going to do, so we're just going to do the ice cream swirl for this one. So the ice cream swirl, which camera are we on, John? So the ice cream swirl, I think, is that close enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So the ice cream swirl is, we're going to just do a blob in the middle. So a nice big blob in the middle, yeah? Then we're going to go to the side, and we're going to go all the way round. How lovely is that? Yeah, so I'll just do that one again. So we're just going to put a nice blob in the middle and then we're going to go all the way around so that you can do the nice swirl. Super. So that's those. And let's use the Russian tip now. Let's so put those there. Let's use the Russian pipe and tip. I'm just going to use one of the mini ones. I don't sell the mini ones in singles, just in sets for the moment. Um, I just need a knife out of that drawer, please. Let me just sit down. Okay, so let me just get a little bit of buttercream. So when you're using any of the Russian piping tips, yeah, I just use a simple buttercream recipe. Now, Monday, I'm going to do a back to basics again, okay? Going over everything about the genuine Russian piping tips. Yeah. So what we're going to do here, we're going to use one of the mini nozzles and we're just going to pop it into the cake, squeeze up and off, squeeze up and off. And I think this makes about 16, 12 to 16 little flowers, we'll see. Somebody count them for me. If I can't count, you know what I'm like. Nine. From nine, are we? Yeah. yeah. So this is all chocolate. I prefer it when we do these in colours, which is what we're going to do on Monday. But all I'm doing here now is just quickly flipping these out with the chocolate buttercream, just to give you a different effect with them. That's all. Any more questions, John? No, not at the moment. And there's that one. Right, so let me just add a bit of water to this water icing. Boiled water. Now this was just a couple of spoonfuls that I took out from the mix. Now to be fair, you only need a drop. So I have to be very careful. Maria, you're not in the way of everybody else, are you? I am. Sorry. Am I? Do you know what? Let me just uh, pour it over here because this is a new kettle and uh, just let me get it on here a minute. It's a new kettle and I just don't want it to pour out. So I'm just going to put in that much for the moment because when you're adding water, you really need to add only a tiny drop at a time. See how black that colour's going? Or well, very dark brown, whatever colour you want to call it. Dark brown, isn't it? So I've only done a tiny bit here. If I was going to make this mix, I'm going to put it on one cake. 
If I was going to make this, I would have probably made half a bag full of mix. But I just wanted to show you just adding the water to it. And what we're going to do is, when you're adding the, the water icing, try and pick a cupcake that's not like that. Okay? Try and pick one that you can fill up so that we're going to get this flat top with. I should have probably made more, really. Anyway, I just took out a spoonful because I wanted it for the buttercream. But, uh, so let's just pour that in there. So people who don't like buttercream, this is ideal for. So we're just going to sit it in there. Yeah. Now normally I wouldn't make just that small amount. Um, I'd normally make, I'd normally use 250 grams of icing sugar and then add water. But I just wanted to show you that you only need to add a tiny drop of water and we need to let that set. Can you show us one of the mini, the mini nozzles you've used? The, one of the mini nozzles, yeah, and I'll show you the other ones. In the set, they're on offer at the moment. Okay. So the nozzles that we've got at the moment, there's nine in a set, and I think they're $18.99 or $19.99. I did have them on a bit cheaper, but I have to tell you, that was the wrong price. So if you got them at that price, you did very well. So these come in a set, and they're called nine brand new nozzles, uh, mini nozzles, nifty nozzles, and the one that I'm using at the moment, just clean that up, my dishcloth, um, always have yourself a clean cloth, don't use your dishcloth, just have one that you use for baking, so I'm using this one at the moment, so I'm just going to use it again on this nice domed one. Do you know how long my um, brownie has been in the oven, anybody? Uh, 40, over 40 minutes. Over 40 minutes? Yeah. Has it? Oh, great, okay. So, should we go and have a look? One second. Ah, yes, yes, right, okay, good. All right, guys. So, he's been in the oven. 40 minutes. I was looking before, when I was glancing before, I was thinking he wasn't baked, it wasn't baked. But he is baked. Do you remember I put all those chocolate drops on the top? That's why. So he is baked and he's got a wobble on him, which is all the melted chocolate. John, which way are you? Are you facing me this way or can I go around here? Okay. So he's got a chocolate wobble on him because of all the chocolate I put on the top. Okay. And I possibly think some of that chocolate should have gone in the mix. So what we're going to do is, I can't chop him up now. I'm going to have to leave him to set. I'm going to have to leave him to set. I'm going to leave the chocolate to set. Leave him to cool down. And then pop him in the fridge. And then me and Maria will take a little picture of us chopping out tomorrow. Yeah? Okay. I should have done one earlier. But there he is. But believe me, this one's going to taste delicious. I won't be able to tell you how delicious it is because I'm on a diet. But Maria will. <laughs> so anyhow, so this one's the water icing. So I'm just going to use my cupcake that I've just crumb coated again. This is the last one. And if anybody wants me to repeat anything, so we're just going to go little one on the cake. So that I wouldn't normally do them in chocolate, if I'm really honest. But I just thought while I've got the chocolate buttercream out, I'd use them. <coughs> I like them when we colour them. So all you guys who are going to join me on Monday, you're going to be watching me using nifty nozzles, two toning, triple toning, Maria, you're in the way of the camera, two toning, triple toning, and um, cling film method, how to cut the bag, how to mix your buttercream. It's going to be a long session. We'll make two lots of buttercream. We'll make our normal buttercream with, with because it's winter, we'll use some condensed milk. Um, I don't use the condensed milk in the summer. And we'll make the Queen of Hearts buttercream as well and see how that goes. Yeah. So there you go. Does anybody want me to re-show them anything? Decorating those cakes there. 
So remember guys, this is what we've made today. So today we have made chocolate brownies, okay? So they've come out the oven, they've got a nice wobble on them, okay? Probably too much of a wobble, and that's down to me probably putting so much chocolate chips in. Maybe I should have done less as more. Maybe I should have done less as more. And um, we'll have a look. Maria and I will do a little video tomorrow, and we'll post a video. We won't go live with it, but we'll do the video, and we'll just post a little video, and Maria can add that onto the YouTube. So we're best off waiting for the YouTube to download it tomorrow, aren't we? Well, I hope it's going to be today. Pardon? I hope it's going to be today. This won't be set in time. If you want to add us cutting this up, uh -huh. we best off wait until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So thinking about it, because once we post on YouTube, you can't edit it. So I think what we'll do is anybody who wants to watch this can watch it after lunchtime tomorrow, because we'll cut this up and we'll add it to the program so that you can see how it was. But we'll also video it so that all of you who've watched the Facebook Live can just see us chopping it up tomorrow. Okay? And... Um, so we've made out of the cocoa powders, so like I said, five delicious flavours. They're all in the sale. So let's go over them again. Any of you have already got the cocoa powders, I hope you're going to give all these a go now. So we have chocolate cherry, which is what we've used today. So we've made chocolate cherry, I have to remember, brownies. Chocolate cherry brownies, that's what we've made. Okay, you can make chocolate orange. That is a gorgeous chocolate cherry. And it's a really nice, deep, fresh flavored chocolate cherry, if that makes sense. Chocolate orange, that's what you can make your Jaffa Twist icing sugar with, because I've showed you how to make icing sugar. That chocolate cherry, some of you guys who've been with me for four years would remember that we made a flavor called Black Forest icing sugar. Well, if you use that cocoa powder and icing sugar, you'll get the black forest. Because I still get people coming back to me and say, Carol, have you got any black forest? So I tell them how to make it, okay? So we've got chocolate orange flavour. Then we've got the chocolate lime, which is what we've made the cupcakes with and the buttercream with. You can use any of these flavours, but these are the five flavours that we do. The chocolate chilli is probably my most favourite, but not everybody's. But I do think you should all give it a go, because even if you don't like chilli yourself, you'd be amazed how many people will try it, and they will come back to you, I swear to you, they will come back to you and tell you that you want some more. They want some more. And chocolate coconuts, just like a bounty bar, and this one is probably the mildest of all the flavours. And this makes um, a lovely um, buttercream as well. They all do, all four of them. They're fantastic. So we have made chocolate brownies, we've made chocolate cupcakes, we've made chocolate buttercream, we've made um, just a glaze, a, a, a water icing, um, I don't know what you want to call it, water icing, fondant, what do you want to call it? I call it water icing or a glaze. And uh, that's what we made today and I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you enjoyed this morning's live. Don't forget the Facebook, the sale is still on. It's going to be on till the Monday the 22nd, is it? No? I'm not sure. John's got to decide. I'll get the date for you, but it's on at the moment. So grab them while you can. Grab your cocoa powders. And if you're new to Sugar and Crumbs, please put a comment on. Let us know how much you've enjoyed it. And all of you who've watched today, if you can pop over to our YouTube channel and just post how you enjoyed Monday's session, let's knock up those ratings. And I'll also put the links on for Baking Heaven as well, because I really do hope that you vote for us. You know, the, the vote with Cake Masters wasn't anything to do with you, unfortunately. After I asked you to vote, it was nothing to do with you guys. It was to do with judges panel. So this vote is all about you guys, what you genuinely believe about sugar and crumbs and sugar and crumbs products. So I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to see you Monday night, back to basics again with the Russian piping tips, the genuine Russian piping tips, nifty nozzles, and I'm going to show you all the tricks on how to use those, how to make your buttercream. I'll see you then. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye. So I'm just going to continue just decorating some more cakes. And what I thought I'd do is I'll go back and go over the swirls for you, just so that when we were live, Maria sort of had to jiggle around the kitchen and I wanted to come in and do a bit more of a close-up. So we're going to use the chocolate buttercream, okay, which is what we made with the cocoa powders and just to remind you five chocolate cocoa powders we do here at sugar and crumbs all intense in flavor and i've showed you how to make chocolate brownies we've got a chocolate brownie here setting 
okay and we're going to show you that when that's been uh, cooled and cut up we're going to add that on to the end of the video we made chocolate buttercream and i'm just going to show you how to make a swirl okay so to make a swirl we're going to start in the middle of the cupcake now it's very important you sit the nozzle here in the middle of the cupcake and then what we're going to do is we are just going to swirl and we're going to overlap it and we're going to go all the way round and down yeah so i'll do that again for you so we're just going to go in the middle there so this one here we're going to go squeeze into the middle i'm going to make an ice cream one and then we're going to go all the way round 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 onto the top so that's your cone one second let's put this one there we're doing and then we're going to make like a hydrangea so we're just going to sit this one in the middle squeeze 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 any of you guys who are chocolaholics you're just going to love these these are so delicious so that's another little design that we're going to do and then it's just nice to know what you can use this tip for it's the 1m wilton and then we're going to just do this nice layered effect and we're going to finish off there now you saw me put some glaze on here before oh sorry let me finish off this rose first so I'm just finish off this row. So we're going to put chocolate leaves on. So not green leaves, just chocolate leaves. And we're just going to pop them in there. And we're just going to squeeze them. And then and what I thought I would do is, using this cake, let me just do this for you. So this is the 352 Wilton. And we're just going to do a nice leaf there. Uh, uh. I'm going to keep going round the cake. Now you've noticed I've not put any buttercream in the middle because I'm just going to leave the dark centre of the chocolate cake be the middle. Then we're going to go in the middle there, in between each leaf. So you don't have to add any stamens this way, you see. There we go. another one yeah so we're just going to leave that as a center but you can drop some pearls in there whichever you like so let's do that there and then let's do a little reefy type effect so we've got our leaves so we're just going to do it sideways on now So if you wanted to do a nice little reef effect for your Christmas copies, then you could actually just do this. I'm just going to go round, round, round again, just to give it a nice effect. And these are great for people who are completely chocolateholics and they just want a lovely, rich chocolate cupcake. And so, do you remember we glazed this one before? So what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to use the mini nozzle. I'm going to sit it on there, squeeze up and off, squeeze up and off, squeeze up and off. And then I'm going to get the leaf nozzle. So we're going to do a little leaf, little leaf. Just another little added effect there for you. Okay, so lots of things that you can do with your chocolate there. And I'll just do that swirl kick again because I know you're going to ask for it again. So our rows again is we are in here and we're just going to go around, overlap, overlap, pull it down. And then we're going to get our leaf nozzle where we pulled it down. I'm going to do a nice big leaf. There we go. 
And that's us, we're gonna come back to you as soon as our chocolate brownies set, okay? So I made the chocolate brownies with the chocolate cocoa powders. We have actually done chocolate cherry brownie, okay? And um, it's a little bit soft on the top and that's because I put absolutely loads and loads of chocolate on, probably far too much. So there's a lot of melted chocolate on here that I'm just waiting to harden up again. And then I'm gonna pop this in the fridge overnight. I'm gonna cut it up. I'm gonna bring it out tomorrow and we're gonna cut it up and add it onto the end of this Facebook Live for you here on YouTube that we are now. So I hope you enjoyed this session. If you want to ask me any questions, please do. Um, pop over to Facebook, onto Messenger, send me a message there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye. Hi everyone. Okay then, so thanks for coming back to us. We finished our chocolate brownie warming on the tray, if you remember, and it was really quite high. So when you do make your chocolate brownie, don't worry about it sinking. That's exactly what it's meant to do. So as it goes cold, it's meant to sink. Now, personally, I really like to chop into this when it's cooled down and it's just sort of it's just sort of stabilised a little bit because when it's wobbly, it's just a little bit too soft to cut into. So you just have to let it all cool down, let the chocolate cool down, let the chocolate drops cool down. Um, I also like them when they've been in the fridge. So what we've done is we've actually put this in the fridge and I'm really very lucky because John came home last night and he was on the telephone to me as he was in the fridge about telling me that he was going to chop the brownie up. And I went, oh, don't chop the brownie up. I need it for you guys. So here it is. So all we're going to do is lift out the pan, which is why we need the parchment paper. It's why I said you don't need to grease the pan at all. OK, so we're going to lift it out. And if you remember, my daughter Ella was saying that her, par her parchment paper sticks to the brownie. And I don't know what the answer to that is. I do need to speak to my daughter and granddaughter. Uh, they live in Australia, so little hello you saw there. So all we're gonna do is we're just going to peel it off. There, I'm just gonna peel it off. There's the chocolate brownie. And then I did put far too much chocolate on. So you can see all the chocolate. I put far too much on, that's because I was being completely lazy. I wanted to use everything that was in the bag because as you know, I'm on a diet and I don't want to eat any of it. So some of it here is just slightly crystallized, but I wouldn't worry about that. That's just the chocolate, it won't do any harm whatsoever. And we're gonna cut it, cuts lovely and smooth. And I'm gonna cut it again. And that's the thing with putting all that chocolate in. So it's gone hard there. I'm gonna cut it again. It's still quite doughy this. I'm going to cut it again and this is going to be so yummy Maria is going to want to take this home so you can see it there and it's a really nice gooey chocolate brownie okay and I am going to resist all temptation and not eat any this is lovely with some ice cream or just like this enjoy it let me tell you, one of the bad things about making a chocolate brownie is you will go back and you will eat the lot. These are not like the chocolate brownies you buy in the shop. These are soft, they're gooey, they're moorish. If you don't put any chocolate that, that, um, drops in, they're a bit more like a cake, so they're a bit more um, spongy, okay? But I put a lot of chocolate drops in here, so it really is personal preference on how much you want to put in. Anyhow, thank you for letting me come back and add this to our little Facebook Live. And uh, I hope you enjoy our YouTube video. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you next week. Cheerio.